the Grand in Wilmington. And when Brian Regan came to play, I asked if he could get an autograph for my brother because yeah. we've always been such big fans. So Brian, Brian Regan wrote, uh, we actually go by Reagan, but whatever. And yeah. He wrote uh, uh, to Brian Reagan from Brian Regan, however you want to say it. I hope I didn't misspell that. And he misspelled the word misspell, and I love the shit out of that. That's amazing. That's, that's incredible. I shaved my face like with a razor for the first time in like 11 months today. Looks Why? good. Why? Just for the hell of it? Yeah, I just had to do something because uh, I was in a real Mr. Mom slump. And, uh, you know, I just had to clean up and go you for it. You had to burn the flannel shirt. That's right. Do you, what did you use to shave? 220, 230? <laughs> 221, whatever it takes. <laughs> You're looking good, Ian. You look clean. Yeah. I, 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 I feel like my lip, there's no... It's like fat it, big. Yeah, it's just, there's like a mile. My, my, my daughter said, it looks, it looks like you have more space to talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we need. Yeah. <laughs> it's a look, everyone, I like everyone drinking at the same time. Yeah, just the this, this Slurp podcast. I saw everybody drinking. I knew I had a shot at a line to take it <laughs> are, are you able to do any kind of stand-up or anything like that chip like via yeah i've done some zoom stand-up which has been which is for what it is it hasn't been bad you know you you think it could be terrible but it, it's it's actually gone fairly well the few times i've done it uh you know people are starting to do some outdoor shows and i'm just a i'm a hypochondriac a germaphobe i'm just not ready for that just yet uh and uh you know, so, so we'll see, but yeah, but I've been doing some online stuff and, uh, which has been fun. And then trying to get, to, I've been trying to do some podcast stuff too. Mary Radzinski and I are working on a podcast so we're trying to bank a couple of episodes before we release. So, uh, sure. just doing, doing some writing, just tr trying to read. I actually read now. I've never been a reader in like my adult life, but I have time to do it now. So I, well, you got, you got, are you just working your way through the bookshelf behind you? Oh, well you, the sad thing is these are, uh, these are CDs and DVDs. I assume that's what you're reading. <laughs> yeah, I just read. Yeah, I just read my, uh, you know, uh, por pornos for pyros uh, album cover right oh, here. Open yeah. that up. Look at the liner notes. Do they thank me in that one? That was always my thing. Anytime I bought a CD, I'd open it up to see if they yeah. thank me. Just yeah, to see. Case. Just in case it doesn't. Oh, it actually says Brian Reagan. So God, your brother. Well, <laughs> brother. He was very yeah. supportive. Yeah. Of both I, porno and pyros. Both porno and pyros. I. Uh, I literally, besides my car, which I almost never use, I don't have a mechanism to even play these anymore. But I just can't get rid. Of, like I just can't get rid of them. Like yeah. they're just well, they're my, uh, the wall? my history. Uh, uh, those, those, those look like they might be load bearing at this point. That one hundred percent are. If I take this down, the entire the entire building is coming down. The roof will fly off. Yeah. No. This is uh this is here for good. I think the next people who move in here are definitely going to uh, are definitely going to have to enjoy my promise ring. Uh, discography so uh and oh one book my current book that i am reading uh naked by david sedaris oh it's a great oh, book a great one. anything i i read it like 10 years ago and i'm re i forgot about it i'm rereading it it's so funny my favorite era of the uh quarantine so far of the lockdown of whatever you call it was this may uh when it was like first getting nice out and we do have in the back of our place we do have a little uh I have a parking spot between behind my house in South Philly, which is, I'm very lucky to have that. But it also doubles as a nice little, like we have like a little sitting area where we can sit and actually be outside. In the car. So, you just go sit in the car. We you know, roll down the windows. It's fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I sit there and I read, uh, I read the book because uh, I'm obsessed. It's my favorite movie. I read the, the novel Jaws yeah. the first time. You'd never and read it before? I never read the novel. Oh, yeah. It's great. And oh. I also read the Jaws log. If you haven't read that, it's amazing. Car uh, uh, Carl Gottlieb, yes, the awesome. one of the screenwriters of yeah. of Jaws, and uh, just takes you through the whole thing. And oh my god, that was like my favorite two weeks of the quarantine so far. I just sat out back and, and read those two books. Yeah, for for the improv nerds, Carl Gottlieb was part of the family in San Francisco, and mm -hmm. a bunch of them do like uh, Catherine O'Hara and uh, Michael. He, he was in the committee too. Is that oh, committee? I'm sorry, you're right. It was committee. That was the name of it. And, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, they yeah family was Chicago. Uh, the committee um, they did a lot of the audio in like scenes where like just talking and stuff. So if you listen and can really identify voices, you can hear Michael McKean, you can hear Catherine O'Hara. It's just so cool. Oh really? I didn't know yeah. that. 
Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So Chip, here's what I challenge you to do. Uh, I did this a long, long time ago because there's a scene in Jaws that always sat weird with me. And it, okay. it's the scene where um, where Hooper comes to the house for the first time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the dinner's awkward. And um, Brody's wife, I forget the actor's name, uh, Ellen something. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lorraine Gary. That's it. Yeah. She laughs at everything that Richard Dreyfus says. And even when he doesn't say funny stuff, and I was like, and I knew there was a book, and I was reading it, and I was like, I wonder if they have a thing in the book. And then when I read oh, the book, wow. I was like, ah! But I would say this, man, after this year, you know, watch Jaws, then go back and read it again, because the first time I read that, I was like, Peter Benchley is brilliant. And the second time I read it, I was like, this book isn't that good, but the movie's fucking great. The movie, it's one of the few where the book is not as good as the movie. Yeah. It's, they just, they made it so much better. And yeah. it's, I, and I enjoyed the book. I, yeah. I definitely enjoyed it, but, but boy, I mean, and of course, you know, like I've also grown up with the movie, not the book. So that's what I, but oh God, the movie's so good. It's, it's the best. I'm wearing shark pants right now. This nice. is my hip ensemble. I have Brian uh, Wilson uh, shirt, and I'm not going to show you my pants. Well, can I? I think yeah, I have yeah, let's, let's, let's pretend I'm not going to read the Jaws novel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the cliffhanger that you threw out there? They have well, an affair. Why are you throughout dinner? They do. They have, an, they have an affair, and the mob is involved in the book. The, the mob? The really? Movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mob's involved. And then, like, a lot of the. Dreyfus was book. banging the sheriff's wife? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he was, dies. Big spoiler for the book. Screw you. Yeah, and it's not a it's not a great white. It's a loan shark. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is Steve with the Punch Out Podcast. With me on this episode are Jesse Preisendorfer. Hey, Steve. Ian O'Shea. Hey, Steve. Kevin Reagan. Hey, Steve. And our storyteller is Chip Chantry. Chip, thanks for being here. Hello, Steve. Thank you for having me. It's all yours. Would you guys like to hear a story? I would love oh, it. Tell us a story, Chip. I love right. it. I want to tell you a story about my favorite coffee shop ever. So picture your favorite coffee shop. If you're coffee drinkers, my friends here, or the listeners out there, uh, do, you have a, do you have a favorite coffee shop, a place that you like to go? And I'm always big on a themed coffee shop. So... You, you know how it's like the library coffee shop and there's like books everywhere, you know, it's like right. cute like that. Or, you know, there's a cat, the cat cafe, you know, yep. and there's like, play with cats or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite coffee shop of all time is the Dunkin' Donuts at 10th and Reed in South Philly. Uh, and great uh, theme. Great what's theme. the theme? Yeah, the theme. Actually, thank you for asking. The theme at the Dunkin' Donuts at 10th and Reed in South Philly is uh, a bus station in the upside down. That's pretty <laughs> much. If you're familiar with bus stations and the upside down from Stranger Things, that is, it's cold. There's sort of just like stuff falling from the ceiling. It's scary. <laughs> um, I live in South Philly and it's just, it's about five blocks south of me. It's in that little triangle where Pat East Passion comes through 10th and Reed. And it's a big, and there's uh, the Triangle Tavern. And then there's the, my favorite Acme in the world, which is right there at 10th and Reed, which used to be the Moyments in prison where H.H. Holmes was hung. Coincidentally, um, that phrase has never been uttered. My favorite Acme. <laughs> Pronounced Acme. Acme, yeah. yes, uh, my, my apologies. I know, I do need to throw the extra syllable in for- uh, is, the Demi, is the Demogorgon like a, just like a soggy mummer? <laughs> it's pretty much what it is. And he just, like, instead of like opening up and you know, screaming at you, he just kind of like, eh. he, just can't get it, he, he literally can't get his costume off and the gold paint is just warping and he just hits on every human being that comes in. Yes. He plays Friday nights at the Triangle Tavern with his trio. <laughs> he does. He does. I did see a gentleman the other day walking that that intersection wearing a uh, very well-worn t-shirt, which I was very surprised because you would think it's new, but maybe it's not. Uh, it was a t-shirt that, of course, I'm assuming most of you have this t-shirt that says, Mummers Lives Matter, which you know, I mean, talk about class and dignity right there. What, Just, uh, what, what color line runs through the uh, black and white American flag on that one? Uh, it was just glitter. I think it was just glitter. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a real classy gentleman. A series of homophobic phrases. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just, yeah. Yeah. Just, just homophobic, just mildly racist. Just lots of little, just. Mild. Oh. oh, yeah. He got the mildly version. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. And that's for, it's for the kids. It's for the kids. <laughs> Is there a mildly racist? Yeah. yeah, I know, right? Yeah, exactly. 
The other yeah. ones were sold out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had to go for that one. Um, so where the Dunkin' Donuts is, it's in its own little parking lot uh, with it's that and a CVS, a 24-hour CVS. And it's like it's the type of place where like that CVS like after 9 p.m. is basically run like on international waters. Like it's like anything, you can do whatever you want. And it's like, I'm not exaggerating. This this happened the other morning at like 7 a.m. Uh, a, a gentleman uh, shot an off-duty police officer in the knee there. Like that was like just, and, it, and people just kept going into the CVS was like, well, we're just, we need to get whatever we need to get. So like, it just doesn't phase anybody. It's like, it's like the saddest version of the game Clue. Like if you know Clue, yeah. it's always like, Colonel Mustard with the, you know, with the revolver in the study, but it's always like, who slashed the grandmother? It's like the guy on PCP with the ripped Dr. Pepper can in the parking lot. You know, like it's like that. Yeah. And so it's, it's always a little, little weird. And I, I walk in one day and this is this is my place. is this the cvs at this point or the so this is the, this is the dunkin donuts i walk okay. into and it's you picture the dunkin donuts it's exactly what you're picturing it's sort of long and narrow the counters to your left and then on the right there's a couple of tables and the tables are always it's like the crew that's there it's like the breakfast club i like to call them but the south philly breakfast club they're all like the, the never-ending small coffee it's the tiniest Co yeah. Coffee. I don't know it's, where they get it. Like, I, I don't think it's even available. I think they just bring it. It is the tiniest shot glass of coffee. Refilled for yeah, coffee. and it's all—it's always that same crew. You know, they're just—they're just from the neighborhood. They're always there. They congregate there probably like from like seven to ten thirty every morning. They're just there. And again, like you said, just they never finish that cup of coffee. Real, real quick. What's the over/under on on the number of tracksuits being worn? Oh, um, I at least at least three at least three in each in, in out, each of, out of like nine guys yeah 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 would and, you chip would you assume other than maybe people working there are you the youngest person in this establishment then by 30 years okay <laughs> by 30 years and it's it's mostly ladies uh there's a it, it's i think it's a good mix but it's it, it, that main crew is like mostly like donuts is frequented by the ladies the la the ladies so if hey, you want to meet some ladies they're there Chip, i mean being in south philly you've got to have your choice of like local independent coffee shops with a lot of character yeah no? what's more character than this it's this is this is this is like I feel like I'm with my people here. Like I feel like it's like my slice of life. It's I, and, and I'm the type of guy too who like there's a great uh, I'll give a plug uh, right on the corner of 10th and Carpenter right by me is Function Coffee Shop. Great coffee shop run by a great guy, which I go to a lot now because uh, I can swing in very easily and grab it uh, and distance. And uh, but w when I'm in like a nice little coffee shop, I'm always the type of guy that tries to sit there, get some writing done, get some reading done. And I just spend the time seething and staring at the person I hate most in the coffee shop who's like loudly talking on the phone or whatever it is. And, and you just like, I just seize on that person and it just ruins my experience and I have to leave. Well, it's a tremendous character study too, like to, to, to go to 10th and read. I mean, it's just, you can't make those guys up. You can't, you can't write for them. You can't, you, you, you can't do it, you know? No. Mario, Mario Puzo did a pretty good job. <laughs> he did. He, he he definitely did. I think he spent some time uh, at Tenth and Reed. He yeah. he one hundred percent did. Uh, so it's usually pretty jumping when I go in, and I'm not. I don't stay there. I go in. I get my coffee or my iced coffee. Uh, for those of you who want to know, it's a large coffee with just a little milk, no sugar. Mm. Uh, so I walk in. Whole milk chip. I believe so. I think that's what I just say milk, and they they give me whatever they give that's, me. That's just, pretty broad. They can do whatever they want. Wheel, brr, yeah, I I don't know what kind of uh, I should ask, um, but I would go in and and you I kind of want to be a regular. It's like you want to be a regular, but I don't sit and stay a because all there's probably nine seats and they're always all taken. Right. And I just go in, I get my coffee, and I leave. Oh, 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 this guy. <laughs> Oh, oh, you're gonna sit in my in in my seat? Excuse me. Oh yeah, Vinny. Vinny doesn't need his seat back. He's protecting Christopher Columbus right now. <laughs> He's a true patriot. <laughs> so, uh, so the one day I walk in, and you, you kind of look in. You always want to kind of size it up before you walk in. You know, get get. And it was jumping like it usually is. Is so, it safe? I mean, am I gonna get shot in the knee? 
you you want to know what's you know what what's do is the, does there need to be a play you know do do I need to you know yeah. look one way or the other and I, I just kind of look in through the doors and there's most of the ladies that are sitting there that they're usually there there's the kind of the guys that sit by the window you give a little wink or working give a little wink to the ladies yeah just a little hey what's up Gladys you know just say, are, are these look. ladies are, are these ladies wearing pajama pants slippers and a hoodie mostly yeah yeah this is this is this is what yeah you you you. You're, you're Norman Rockwelling it, right? Perfectly. You're just, every detail is, is right there. So I, I see that they're all sitting there and there's about five people in line. So it's jumping. It's like 9.30 in the morning, maybe. So I walk in and I open the door and I notice as soon as I walk through the threshold, I notice that all of this is going on as well as there is a gentleman who looks like, if, if I had to put it, looks like Alan Arkin. So if you're familiar with Alan Arkin, okay. Love his work. Put him in his 70s, uh, bald guy, uh, lanky, very tall, lanky guy, uh, who I've seen in there before. Um, he is lying on the ground. Just lying on the ground next to the two tables of the ladies, of the regulars. Lying on the down, just on his back, hands to his side, eyes closed, just... I'm assuming unconscious. Okay. Just lying there. Everybody, there's nothing else out of order, though. You didn't get the, you didn't get the sense uh, that this was a bit? Well, that's what I didn't know. It's like, like is, is, is A, is he dead? Uh, did, did, he, did, his back, did he throw his back out? Um, He's not making any movements or sounds? Nothing. Could be Eyes a power nap. This like, is a great place for a power nap. Yeah, I was like, is this a viewing that I'm walking into? Like, that's the way he, like, <laughs> arms to his side, just back. Like, and it's a skinny, you know, it's kind of a thin place, a narrow place. You yeah. went to Joey Two Fingers viewing? Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. You know, you give wow. them the tip and, you know, they get you a little closer. You, it's, you it's take your hat pin out and you poke them one just in case. Make sure just you to make your money. Sure. Yeah, Pour a little hot it. coffee out on them. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, you know, one for you. Slide Joey. a little envelope into his suit. You run your scalpel up the bottom of his foot and see if he clenches his toes. <laughs> see, we all have different methods we follow. You really do. I, we got some Presbyterians, some Catholics here. Yeah, we know we're going. Here. <laughs> all I know is that nobody has willingly, in the history of time, ever touched their skin to the floor of a Dunkin' Donuts. Mm. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And this is not the Dunkin' Donuts There's to something start. Something very wrong here. Very yes. Wrong. But okay, but Jesse, here's the thing though. According to ev everyone else in this Dunkin' Donuts, wildly disagrees with you because everybody's going about their business. I'm very concerned right now. I'm, I'm in your camp. I'm like, something is wrong. But n that was the scariest part. Nobody else seemed to care. Paying him any mind. Nothing. And I'm like, what is happening? I'm a bit I of a panicker when I see people laying flat on the floor. Me too. I me too. It, so. I know. I'm just, I, like, I walked in and I'm like, what is going... Like, and, and, and then it's like, I literally did. It's like, is this one of those like hidden camera, what would you do shows? Oh yeah. <laughs> Am I, is this, and I'm like, do I help this guy? Like what, but it's like, and then I'm like, did he just throw his back out? So he's like, I don't know what it's, I'm so freaked out at this point. He could literally have died before any of these people got in, but their cataracts, right. they have bi bifocal cataracts. They Can't have see no him. idea. They Can't didn't see him. him. They didn't see him. So I'm trying to play it cool, but I like, can't and so like i'm making eye contact with the ladies who i'm assuming are with him because he's lying next to their table well almost like a like a golden retriever would yep. you know just like right there <laughs> and i literally have to scoot past this gentleman because it's a narrow place and they got the they got the little ropes for the to stand in line so i like i've never had to scoot past a corpse before it's not a fun situation like you're just like and, and I'm making contact with eye contact with the ladies to see if I'm like, is, are, are we kosher here? What is, is, that, is this okay? You know, I'm assuming they have it covered. So I'm like, okay. So I stand in line and, but I'm just, I'm like just trying to figure out what's going on. Right. And they're just closed. Like, Eyes are closed. Just real just, quick. Did you just like put dibs on anything where like, I got dibs on the boots? Yeah. I'm like, oh, I love that hat he's wearing. He's got a nice ball cap. Nice that ring, cap. that pinky ring is sweet. Yeah, just, you know, you didn't you didn't notice the psychology student sitting in the corner recording your reactions. Mm. Right, exactly. Like taking down copious notes. I, I was like, what is going on? But I'm like, you got over enough to get in line. Exactly. I do get in line. But like, I'm like, 
right. And then it's like the group think mentality where I'm like, well, obviously they have this covered. Yeah. Right? Because I'm like, this can't be. Here, so- here's something I just want to point out. There's a line. So other people have done this too. You're you're in the line. I'm like number five in line at this point. <laughs> this is a psychology experiment. I've heard about this. This is awesome. It has to be, right? So I'm I'm trying to listen to conversations to see if I can piece anything together, you know? And then finally, one of the ladies says to the other one kind of loudly, she's like, and just very matter-of-factly, as if like, oh, yeah, I spilled my coffee. She's like, yeah, he just ran in and punched him and ran out. Whoa. And I, I was like, what do I, like, and I'm like, how? I'm like. So we're assuming him is the guy <laughs> yeah. on the ground. Someone, the guy on the ground. Yeah, someone's got beef with Alan Arkin. You just yes. gotta let it, you just gotta let you you gotta let it run its course. The circle of life, like what? Let me ask you this: Are you are you gonna give CPR to a hyena? You you know Hakuna Matata. I might. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so okay, at that point, the gentleman's eyes pop open. Oh, thank God! And he like sits up like Dracula style, like just you know, boom, you know, just like ninety degree angle, kind of sits up and just. <gasps> And like, and starts looking around, and he's totally dazed, and like nobody's really doing anything. Then he starts to stand up, and and like he's an older gentleman. I'm I'm putting him in his late seventies, and he's you know he's and he's also been knocked out. Yeah, that's hard on a good day standing up. Yeah. So he, like, starts going, like stands up, but starts losing his balance. I run through the 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 ropes like i'm winning a race you know to like because yeah. america runs on duncan and like i i ju- and i go to grab him like to like grab him oh what a like, hero sit him down on a chair and, and this is what i've learned okay this this is what i've learned halfway through and i, I want to tell all of you this you are all nice adults nice people anybody who's listening i learned this truth that if you ever walk into a dunkin donuts the next time you walk into a dunkin donuts establishment just know that you are in charge. <laughs> like you are the responsible adult. If they're if they nominate a block captain, it's gonna be you. No matter where you are, you walk into a Dunkin' Donuts, you are in charge. Okay? You're the leader. I'm apparently. They never make my coffee right, and if I could just go back there and just do it real quick, I, I'm sure you know. Carte blanche. Yeah. Carte blanche. And like sure, I got and it. the. The thing is, the, the people who work there behind the counter, they are very efficient, very hard worker. They don't have time to deal with a, a physical altercation on the other side of the counter. Well, Chip, that's sweet. You, you, you're, you're, you're considering that this was the first knockout of the day. I, that is true. That is true. You know, they have, this is their third or fourth. You know, they've, yeah. they've gone through, they've, Penton, they've danced. Penton it Reed, down. it is not the first unconscious person on the floor. No, no, it's, that, that is true. That is if they address them all, they'll never get anything done. Yeah, and if true. I could just if I could just point out, as a young straight white man, when you walk into a room, yeah. you're automatically in charge. That's what it is. I that's what I've been told. Damn. I was so, given a badge and Jesse, was that so hard? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's awkward. This podcast is awkward because there are four of us. And it, we're nego- we don't know who's uh, who, who's which in charge. Us? Hey, I I think I can. I, maybe you. I don't know. Well, we know it's not her. It's just not. Me. <laughs> we can, we can, we can <laughs> narrow <laughs> that down. We can I'm narrow right. that down. Okay, we I'm got. I'm okay, and I'm too early. <laughs> I'm out. So she's out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> could could I think it possibly be her? Kevin and I have the beards. I think it's between one of us. I don't. He's I ever don't. younger. You shaved, Ian. Younger. That's on you. You would have right. been the boss, but you shaved. Yep. It's on you now. That lip right there. I know. It's so huge. <laughs> the younger of you is the winner. So. Right. Right. All hail Chip. Thank you. Thank you. We, we defer to your leadership, sir. All right. So. I Thirty-seven cents out of every dollar I work. <laughs> <laughs> and I put it in the cup as a tip in uh, Dun- at Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> so I kind of like sit the guy down, and then I like I grab. I, I was like, "Can I get some water for him?" So and they're like, "Oh yeah, sure. Here's some water." So I like, give him some water, you know. And, and 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 he's like, "What happened?" And everybody's looking at this point, and he, so he's sitting on a chair at this point, and he's you like, can "What?" Tell happened? him anything. Tell right. him anything. Exactly. But here's the thing: 
nobody said anything. No, so, not down there. No not way. Down there. Yeah. So they're just like, there were no eyewitnesses. So nobody, he's like, what happened? And I was like deferring to like, do you want to tell him? And like, I'm the last guy in. So then I, but then I'm like, I guess I have to tell him. Those ladies are not snitches, dude. Um, they're not telling exactly. him nothing. So I was like, I think. You could have done anything. It was like re- regarding Henry. You yes. Have, yeah. You could have done anything. Started your grandson. Sure. Yeah. You could have been like, sweetheart, it's okay. You're, you're going to be okay, sweetheart. <laughs> I, I could have overboarded him, is right. what you're saying. Totally. That's, yeah, that's the modern, <laughs> that's the modern regarding Henry. Overboard. I want to see him walking behind you right now, cleaning your apartment. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Wearing, Thank you. wearing your wife's robe. Alan right. Arkin. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Alan Arkin. So I'm, I'm your son, Adam Arkin. Son of <laughs> Hope. You know me. We're, we're both very successful. I'm more yeah. of a director. Yeah, I'm, more, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm behind the camera. So then at this point, I am sort of relieved because another gentleman comes running in to the Dunkin' Donuts. He's on his phone. He comes out. He's like, all right, I called 911. They're on their way. Oh, a straight white guy to the rescue. Thank goodness. I know, right? So it's Thank like God there was two of them there. I oh know. So I was like, okay, at least the police slash ambulance, whoever, they're on their way. So, and this guy's got a knot on the back of his head. Sure. Like, I'm, like it's a golf ball size, just knot on the back of his head. And he's dazed and, you know, and he's like, what happened? Two hits. I yes. hit you and you hit the floor. Hit the floor. And that's exactly what it was. So he's looking at me and I was like, I think somebody punched you. I think that's what happened. He's like, I don't have any enemies. And I was like, I'm sure you don't. I, 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 but I'm just trying to like, just, so finally a, a police officer shows up and starts taking, like, they're talking to some of the witnesses out front. And so I go out and I'm like, hey, is, can somebody look at him? He's not doing too well. And the cop's like, yeah, we'll get to that. And I'm like, I was like, oh, I don't want to ruin your to-do list here, you know, but I was like, this could be, do- I don't, it could be hemorrhaging blood. And so the cop knows if he steps into that Dunkin' Donuts, it's all business for him. He's got a, he's got things to do. It's like Field of Dreams, you know, yes. like Graham, that cop changes. Yeah. Before we started the story, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but uh, the Dunkin' Donuts on 10th and Reed has seceded. <laughs> <laughs> From the union, yeah, it's it's right. its own it's its own uh, Pretoria or whatever it is. In uh, uh, is that what it is? Is that what it is? Uh, I don't know. I don't read books. It yeah. sounds good to me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so so finally, the the police officer comes and starts talking to him. So I'm like, all right, I'm step. I'm I can be done now. So then I do the most awkward thing. I step back on the other side of the ropes to order my coffee because yeah. I was like, well, I guess I just got to order my coffee now. I mean. Can I get a, a cup of water and an iced coffee, please? Yeah, just, can I just get an iced coffee? It's for the gentleman. Uh, so I just, I get my iced coffee and I, I leave. I just, I just, I just get out of there. And I was like, that's the weirdest thing. So, so, but I, I can't stop thinking about it, right? So the next morning, I, I have to go back. Like, I have to go back the, the next Did morning. Did you lay awake all night? Well, just real quick, what was that guy hearing as the cop is talking to him? He's just like, well, wait, wait, we think you're wild, wild, you ain't. 100. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And Steve, I just, all night, that's all I was thinking about is this gentleman is just like, is, is he dead? Like, he could be, like, he could be taken to the hospital and die. Like, this yeah. is. Is this he is still there? Murder. He could still be laying there. You don't know. I don't know. And I'm like, so, so the next morning I go back because I, A, I need my coffee. I mean, number one. And B, I was like, I want to find, is, is he going to be back? Is he still going to be there? Or at the very least, am I going to finally dip my toe and socialize with those ladies for the, that I've always wanted to, to be like, hey, what happened? Based on the amount of information that you got the day prior, it, it was very big of you to think that you'd go back there and get more information. That I'd get anything. Y- yes. Right. Like, I'm like, I'm, 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 other, I'm other, other than Shiv in the corner by the right. orange yeah, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not Truman Capote. I don't know how to do this, to go into this town and find out about it. So I go in and I kind of ask around and like, no, and again, totally correct, Ian, nothing. Like, no, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. I ask the people behind the counter and they're just like. You a cop? You a oh, cop? Yeah, you a cop? You got to yeah. tell us. You have yeah. to tell us if you, you are. You have to tell us. This you in charge? charge? You in yeah. charge? Are you in charge? I'm like, well, obviously. 
So no sign of them. So I was like, well, mystery is just never going to be solved. I get my coffee. I walk out the doors into the parking lot. And here comes the gentleman walking towards. Alan Arkin? Alan Arkin. What? <laughs> yes, just having a grand old time, just walking down. Was and he wearing a hat on the bump? He was. And it was like, it was very, it was like, yeah, it, it, it was tilted very uh, uh, haphazardly. <laughs> so I was like, oh, hey, how are you doing? And he's like, oh, pretty good. How you doing? And just keeps walking. And I was like, no, 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 <laughs> no. This wasn't just a pleasantry. I was like, how are you doing? You were. I haven't slept, sir. <laughs> yeah, can you please? So I was like, I was. You got hit yesterday. I, I was, saved your life. We had a, we had a moment. I was in charge. I was in charge. Tell I, me I was in charge. Is. Charles is in charge of your days and your nights. I'm 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 the white guy that helped you. Yes. Do you see my skin, sir? And he, I was like he, and I was like, oh no, you got hit. And and, and he was like, oh, were you there? And I was like, yeah, I was talking to you for a second. And like, so he doesn't remember any of that. I was like. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I'm all right. I got this bump. I'm all right. It's like, well, did you? And then I said, I was like, well, did you find anything else about the guy? Like, did you know the guy? And I was like, now I'm just, I want to find out. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I don't know the guy. Apparently, it was a gentleman who uh, hangs out in front of the Dunkin' Donuts a lot, uh, has had some issues and that's, you know, some mental issues and that type of thing. Apparently, what happened is they, must have got, I don't know if it was a one-sided altercation or something happened or he just decided to, you know, take a swing at somebody and then ran off. Uh, but so I asked him, I was like, did they catch the guy? Do you know? And they're like, oh yeah, they got him like three blocks down. They found him. They got him. I was like, well, that's good. I was like, are you doing okay? And then this is what he said to me. He just looks at me. He's like, yeah, well, they told me that I got a swing or two in too. So, you know, fair fight. <laughs> and then just turns and walks into the Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> oh and that is why Dunkin' Donuts at 10th and Reed in South Philly is my favorite coffee shop. The M. Night Shyamalan twist is that the guy that punched him was the last guy who was laid out in the Dunkin' Donuts on 10th and Reed. He took his place. The cycle continues. Who now is the Fisher King? It's going to be me next, I think. I think that's oh, what it is. Sure, dude. You're, you're walking a fine line getting to know these people. You've been really sucked am. into a vortex. Yep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but hey, the coffee's so good. It really is. And I can't go back anymore. I haven't been back because you have to go in to the, they don't, you can't do it like right at the, like, you know, with distancing. Yeah. So I, it's been months since I've been in, been in the place. Do what you should do bring in a plaque of yourself as like a hero customer. Yeah. And just hang it up. No one would even know. Like, if you could just do it, like, beside the orange juice vending machine so they don't see it much. I mean, they don't clean out there. Obviously not. I can just put it right there. Yeah, I'm good. With a little note that says, this guy gets free coffee. Yeah, that's all I want is just, just a free cup of coffee every now and then for being a hero. And a pat on the back for being in charge. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You deserve it. Yeah. Upper management is what I want. Good work, white guy. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.